Alrighty, as you can see, we've made some interesting progress on our simulator rebuild project. Found a lot of interesting things out, fixed a few, and even got a few things working. Let's get into it. All right, before we get started, I do want to take and do a quick shout out. Big thank you to Donald Papp over at hackaday.com and to Andy Edsler from uh, pcgamer.com uh, for featuring our project here. Uh, any kind of you know interest we can garner from that, fantastic, and you know your support really means a lot. So thank you. Uh, we've done some pretty crazy things here with this project. It's moving a lot faster than I thought that it would. So step one ultimately was we had to go through the wiring on our uh, simulator. Um, it was in shambles, partly from being torn apart to be repainted after repairs, but also just from poor maintenance from whoever had it before me. Um, nice thing is we went through everything, reconnected everything, found an appropriate power supply, and we were actually able to get power to the unit. Um, lights were coming on. We had actual like interaction with it. Holy cow, this thing's working. This is so exciting. Now what do we do? Well, we need to interface it with a computer. Well, after some research, I was able to take and find the PFC protocol tests um, for this specific simulator online. Uh, so I've got a full test suite now, and I actually was able to connect this to my computer, USB, and get full input controls from the unit as it stands right now. Now, our <coughs> avionics stack's not there, but all of our functional cockpit elements work. Well, almost all of them. Uh, we had to do a little bit of fighting with a few things. First, somebody took it upon themselves to cut our DB9 connector cord from our controller board um, down to our, our rudders. So that took a, a moment to go, okay, well, we got to get a cable on order, got it in. And for us, luckily, once we connected that, lo and behold, we have rudders. Well, mostly. We have brakes on both sides, but the captain's side's rudders don't work. Probably just a dead potentiometer. Literally a $5 part, and we'll have that up and running. And a very minor thing, our autopilot button, again on the captain's side, doesn't work. The button just needs to be replaced. Another $5 part. Other than that, and going through and tightening some screws and bolts, we had the, uh, the cow flaps in very poor condition. Uh, they would wobble all over the place. They're very low in the cockpit. So as you're getting in and out in this style of cockpit, as there's no doors, your chance of brushing it with your foot and kicking it um, very, very high because they stick out quite a ways and they had been banged many, many times. So we were able to take and tighten some screws up and lo and behold, we've got functional cow flaps again. Pretty amazing. There are a few other bugs. Um, our trim down here for ailerons and rudder, they're going to need to be uh, replaced. The potentiometers in them. Old carbon swipe style. They've been used a bit and they've sat for a long time and that just kind of eats those potentiometers up so replacing those will help clear up a problem that we've had in the software which is noise lots and lots and lots of data updates being sent to our our test software from the controller board because there's so much noise in the system with these old components now let's talk about our system kind of the elephant in the room something new this is obviously a small rack mount setup. Uh, we've got a monitor, keyboard mouse, KVM switch, power conditioning, and then three computers. We have a master computer, and that's gonna be our front display, and we have a left and right dedicated system. Right now, these are built out. Now, don't go getting too uppity about parts yet. Right now, these are built out as Ryzen 5 5500 systems. They've got 32 gigs of RAM, and they are all three sporting a 5060 Ti um, in them. These are probably not the final systems we're gonna be using. However, the form factor is. So we're gonna be using this entire rack setup that we've got, but we may replace the motherboard 
CPU, and RAM, possibly video card, as we move along. We just gotta kinda figure out what are the flight characteristics, performance, visuals that we want, especially with the newer software. Now, this is originally used with a you know couple older versions of X-Plane, X-Plane 10 specifically. Um, 11 was used with this as well. And 11 is what I'm kind of gearing this build around. 12 is out and it looks gorgeous and actually runs really great on these computers. We're just gonna have to kind of get to that point where we start making decisions when we connect everything back together and start putting monitors in place. Now, there are a couple other oddities in this. Uh, we've got some more maintenance to do on our main unit here. Um, so interestingly enough, the way that this um, control input for the yoke works uh, is a bunch of cables and springs and there's actually a bunch of differentials from Toyota Tacomas from 2005 to 2013. These differentials have seals in them and they have leaked and they have leaked oil all over the inside of this cabinet. Uh, and it also reduces the, uh, the feeling of the input on this. You lose that kind of dampening effect. So we're gonna be going through replacing the seals in those. Not a project I expected to be doing, but hey, if I'm working on a car, working on an airplane, working on a simulator, sure. We'll, we'll roll with it. It's all electronics in the end, right? So kind of exciting, as we ended up taking and getting everything connected up, we were able to take and go over to our master control switches, turn everything on, and lo and behold, we've got lights. We've got our automatic trim. We've got uh, all sorts of functionality that came to life on this unit. Our chronographs, chronometers, started working. Um, our, <laughs> our Hobbs meter for hours on the unit started ticking away. It really kind of excited me because all of a sudden, this is no longer just a, a object. This has the chance of becoming something. Pretty cool. Uh, totally excited about moving forward on this project. And a really sweet component to all of this is, <laughs> I was able to find and order replacement keys. So now we have two keys, which means we can run two engines. So there are a few other interesting things that we could use some feedback if you know about these uh, systems to help us figure some things out. First of all, under our throttle uh, controls here, there's a mystery USB port of some kind. Um, you can see in the images here, it, it's an odd little thing. We don't know what it connects to or what it historically connected to. Um, another interesting thing is we've got over here under our uh, lighting control panel, um, some mystery wires. Um, there's no contacts that look like they've ever been plugged to on this unit, but they're dangling out there and we have no clue what they connect to. If you have any idea what that could be, let us know. We'd like to know what your thoughts are on that. Um, now, I've been doing some other interesting research and you know, I've got some LCD screens that I've purchased that we'll be able to take and, and put in um, for our, our gauge clusters. Hopefully that's our next project, our next segment here. That starts really making this come to life and we're very excited about that. Anyways, there you have it. Uh, big, super giant thanks to everyone in the community who's been emailing, messaging, um, uh, leaving comments. It's absolutely been fantastic. The amount of feedback that I've gotten uh, and you really good, useful feedback, not just opinions, has been fantastic. The fact that there's so many of these units out in the wild kind of surprised me. I, the amount of research I did online to try and find anything about these, boy, I beat my head on the keyboard for days and I could find very, very little. Now we've got a community starting to form around these and that's really exciting. They are fun, fantastic units, precision flight controls. <laughs> make stuff that lasts. I cannot believe how well designed and well built this entire system is. And here we are now, raising it from the grave and rebuilding it. Now, anyway, so there you have it. That's our summary for kind of the progress we've been able to make. 
things are going to be coming here uh, fast and furious. Matter of fact, uh, while I'm finishing editing this video right now, I've got the next video already shot needing to be edited. We have some exciting things happening with these displays. So keep an eye out for updates on our videos and by all means, keep flying.